Hello friends, uh, this is Vakim Anem, a very warm welcome from uh, Dubai. Today uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, what is a courageous mind and how we can develop the courageous mind and what is and why I started uh, a courageous mind and what are the objectives of this. So uh, to start with, I would say that uh, we all have our own journeys and it is the quality of our leadership skills that determine how we experience and navigate through the vicissitudes of life. In this journey, each one of us is living two lives, okay? one inside our mind and the other in the material reality. The mind is a private place where we have complete freedom to think what we want, feel however we want and imagine anything. We can either make our mind a sanctuary a place to recuperate and re-energize ourselves to rise from the debris of our shattered ambitions and defeat to create new ambitions and successes in our life or to become to make it our own nemesis that can create a picture of misery and suffering in our life so the choice is ours how we want to use our mind the mind uh, is a processor that provides the direction purpose interpretations action and responses to situations, people, and words. Like a mobile phone, uh, which cannot be uh, attached to the charger all the time, or else it loses its key purpose, which is the mobility. Likewise, we too cannot be living inside uh, our mind in the past or in the present, uh, in its sanctuary, avoiding what is happening all around us. We have to live in the now to truly live, in my view, the mind is a workshop where we mix the colors of emotions, feelings and thoughts to give a living expression of a painting of the mind on the canvas of reality. So it's really important how we use the mind in manifesting the reality that we have. In my journey, I realized that external life is simply a manifestation of what is brewing inside my mind. My thoughts, emotions and feelings are the inner palette of colors with which I am painting the canvas of my mind. These inner, uh, or this inner painting is being reflected on the fabric of reality in the form of my words, actions and attitude to give a living expression to my inner emotions. That's what is happening. To change the colors or the attractiveness of the canvas of reality, I have to work on the source of the painting that lies inside myself and in my mind. And this realization was the emergence of the concept and philosophy of courageous mind. So the idea was very simple, that as we are living two lives, one inside our mind, which is very private, and the other one, which is in the reality where we are interacting with people, it is really important how we use our emotions, feelings, uh, and thoughts in our mind to manifest the type of reality that we want. And that was the whole idea behind Courageous Mind. So developing a courageous mind is a leadership imperative. Each one of us is a leader. It doesn't matter that if we have our business or we are working for a company, or if you're a mom or you are a dad or you're old or you're young, each one of us is a leader in providing our own uh, leadership to different people who come in touch with it. So a mom, is taking care of her children. That's leadership. She's shaping the future of the children. Uh, likewise, the old people are training the younger ones. So everyone is a leader and we need to learn the qualities of leadership. So courageous mind is a philosophy or an attitude of living with courage and having a laser sharp focus on value creation. So there are two parts of it which I, which I want to highlight. The first part is about having the courage and the second part is about value creation. Courage gives us the fuel or the energy and the focus on value creation in all states of well-being. So it's not only material uh, value creation, it can be social, emotional, spiritual, physical and inspirational uh, that can enrich the quality of a life by evolving happy emotions and these emotions manifest themselves in our living experience. So that is how the, we should be using this concept of courageous mind in developing a great living experience. So now let us look at two uh, of the pillars of developing a courageous mind. The first one being courage and the second being value creation. So let's focus on courage. 
uh, in my mind, when I define courage, courage is not about the flashy demonstration of brute power. Rather, it is mustering of strength to face our own inner fears, negative thoughts, and limiting paradigms that constrict our ability to operate at our true potential. It is about challenging our basic fabric of life to relearn how to manage our emotions, feelings, words, and actions to reinvent ourselves from inside out to live passionately and happily despite the vicissitudes of life. So using the three elements within the courage is like emotions, feelings, and words. Um, and using those to manifest the life that we have. So courage in essence is the training of the mind to avoid the reactionary response to situation, words, and thoughts to maintain a calm emotional constitution as we know that our emotions create our reality. So if emotions are causing us the causing our reality, then it is important that we are very careful about in choosing the emotions that we have. Our biggest problem is that we are very reactionary. We react to situations, to words, and why do we react? It's because we have uh, our own past experiences, our interpretation of situations, and a perceived outcome that we have in our mind which makes us to act in a particular way. Uh, most of our stress, broken relationships, and failures are caused by a surge of negative emotions based on a past experience, interpretation, and the perceived outcome. If we can control the emotions by stopping the mind from going crazy with interpretations, we can shed off what we are not to be truly who we are or what we want to be. So there's a facade which is on us. That is a facade of conditioning that, is, that we all uh, carry with us. It's based upon our society, based upon our education system, based upon the culture that we come from, based upon a family. So there's a lot of learnings which have been put on top of it. And this is not us. This is the expectations of others or living a life from the lens of, of some other people. And over time, we have to just shed that uh, conditioning to bring out the true individual that we are, to enjoy the life in the best possible way and to experience it uh, with all its color and fragrance. Okay? So, uh, and over the last 26 years of corporate life, I have seen many executives stressed as they're running like a hamster on a wheel in their mind, trying to, you know, to please someone uh, else uh, in a way to ensure that their fears do not materialize. And what are those fears that they have which are bothering them so much? The fears that bother them so much are fears that they are not, uh, may not get fired, fears of not getting promoted, uh, or not being appreciated. This reactionary response to false thoughts, interpretations and perceptions is actually what is keeping them stationary or in a decline as genuine movement requires objective risk taking and creativity that only comes by keeping calm mind that involves positive emotions. So uh, by reacting to things we are actually and by bringing in the fears and limiting paradigms we are impeding our own growth in whatever function, in whatever career that we, we, we choose. It is sad that many today are living a stressed life caused because of the fears, limiting paradigms and a culture that inadvertently promotes stress. I have heard in my career many times uh, senior executives saying that, asking me the question that, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> I've always wondered why should I be up at night worrying about the business or for that matter anything. We should all be sleeping well so that our brain is well rested so that we are able to solve the business problems in a better way and lead a happier life. But these pressures, these expectations that have been put onto us is a clear reason why we are unable to operate at a full potential. Okay? Organizations are a collection of individuals who have different experiences, interpretations, and perceptions that are bubbling under the surface of the stated, published culture of the company. These under the surface cultural aspects have a bigger impact on the business results. For example, companies struggling for innovation may inadvertently be uh, creating expectations that you work late, worry about the business uh, to lose sleep, uh, lose temper in meetings as a sign of being passionate for the business or keep pushing hard 
on people to deliver results when you know yourself that the results are impossible with the tools and restrictions enforced on the team, right? To overcome this, the executive should develop a non-reactionary mindset of growth and objectivity that reduces the negative emotions to make the mind of the team a perfect workshop for solutions, ideas, and creativity. That is the part of courage that we are looking at. So the element that you have to think about is how do you use your mind in overcoming your fears, negative thinking, and uh, complacency uh, as well as your reactionary mode. Now, personally, I have been on a journey and I'll share my journey as well. Like uh, when I was doing a little bit of my own self reflection and I asked a lot of people that what are the things that I don't do well and then also was very, very tough on myself to understand uh, what can I improve in my life. There were many things to improve but there are a few things which stood out uh, as the key ones and the first one was that I was reacting to situations and reacting very, very fast to those. Like an email would come in, I have to respond to it immediately. Uh, if there was a, someone would say something, you just go in and respond. And these responses are coming from the amygdala, which is the, uh, the primitive part of the mind. And this is the, the mind which works on fight and flight response. Now, if you wait for 10 seconds, then this message goes to the prefrontal cortex, which is the front part, which is the more rational part, and then your responses are better. So what I have tried to do is, like for my own self, I try to avoid reactions, and it is helping, because this can also, uh, you know, protect so many of the relationships in our home, in our workplaces. Uh, we are all a bit stressed, and sometimes when we are stressed and we get into a reactionary response, we can break some really beautiful relationships and we should not be doing that, right? Just a, f a few minutes uh, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, waiting uh, and just calmly understanding what the question has been or what the words have been and then responding in a way that these become the words, the bombing words, the words which are building relationship. It can, it can just change our life completely, okay? So that's a little bit about courage. The second part on value creation. Now let's look at the other aspect. Value creation is the essence, in my view, of every business and even life. Successful businesses and individuals are those who create value for others. Value for consumers, customers, suppliers, shareholders, employees, etc. And in the process create value for themselves. The important point to note is that you first have to offer value before you can make value for your own self. The problem is that most of us are so focused about making value for ourselves that we forget the fact that we have to first create value for the other people. And this value that I'm talking about is not only about materiality. It can be about any other uh, area of well-being like emotional, physical, social, spiritual and inspirational. A kind word, a pat on the back, uh, a good word, an encouragement an idea in terms of giving hope to people to maybe, you know, improve their physical well-being, uh, uh, giving your hand to a person who has uh, fallen, you know, uh, to, to pick them up so that they can start running again, giving them energy, giving them drive, giving them, uh, a, a, you know, an empathetic ear, giving them a shoulder to cry on. All these are value creating elements. And sometimes these are even more important than contributing with money part or through materiality. So value creation and if the life can be focused on on activities that are only creating value for others, you enrich your life much more. What is gratitude? The things that have been talked by so many of the, the gurus and by every culture which is like be nice, be uh, offer gratitude for the things that you have which is thanking other people saying that we appreciate the value that has been given to us so you're offering something in return return uh, saying nice things uh, creating you know connections uh, with uh, within the society all these elements are elements of value creation uh, if i look at the business specifically then businesses are all about transacting value offering value in the form of products and services and receiving value in the form of remuneration. Any activity that is not creating value should be completely eliminated from the business chain. So 
uh, and that will dramatically simplify the operations and will create a structure that optimizes value creation for the consumers, customers, and the company. And in my view, every leader should look at three key areas for incorporating value creation mindset into the business. And uh, this is true not only for big companies, but also for the companies in incubation or the companies or a smaller company. So please uh, take note of this. The first area that every leader or an entrepreneur should look into is a strategy. Okay? Strategy is nothing too complicated. Strategy simply means a choice that you make. So a strategy will clearly define the business choices that create value. So your strategic choice should be one that articulates in a very good way how the business is going to create value. Which area you're going to play in and how you're going to create value for the consumer, customer and for your company. Right? So how are you going to do it? So you cannot have like everything cannot be, cannot be all encompassing. The idea of a strategy is it's a choice. So it's a it's based upon your limited resources. What are the choices you're making which is going to maximize the value creation for your customers, consumers, and in the process, it's going to also maximize your value creation. So that's the first one is the strategy. The second one is the operations of the business. Valuable operations are those that have eliminated most or all non-value added activities. So the more non-value act added activities that you're going to have in your business, the lesser value it will create. I think the entire chain of business activities from strategy, you know, goal setting, right to the execution in the marketplace should be all based upon value creation. If you're creating value, keep that activity. If the activity is not creating value, but it's only, you know, uh, helpful for people's discussion or it's a part of a system, then it has to be eliminated. So that's, that's a key, a key second point. The third one for me is the measurements that we have. All key performance measures should be based on value creation alone. Now this is something which I have seen in many companies is that there are certain measures which are not directly related to value creation and uh, for many companies they don't even have standard set of KP, uh, KPIs, uh, key performance indicators to evaluate the people and people just make whatever uh, things that they believe have been the contribution to highlight those uh, whereas you need to have a standard set of measures based upon the overall value creation for the company and if and the individual should be evaluated those people who are creating more value should be rewarded more and the people who are not creating the value are the ones who may be you know laid off later or are rated lower than the other ones so it's important to in the organization to focus on value creation. And if you're focusing on value creation, there's no way that the businesses will not grow. It could be that the value pools uh, in your sector, in your geography may have shrunk. And that's where you have to see that if that is being caused, then how do you move to new profit pools that can give you more value creation over a longer period of time? And that's why I hugely recommend that businesses need to have value mapping instead of just having the forecasting. So with the forecasting, you're, you're taking in all the data and saying that based upon the latest data, the new cost, the new uh, sales estimates and others, this is the money that we are going to make. But what it is not seeing is that what was your value pools uh, or the value creation in the last three, four years and what is happening to that? Is there a change in the environment uh, in which you are operating? Uh, is the consumers spending less? What is? What are the dynamics? And how the di dynamics are moving in the next three to five years? And how do we then create the building blocks that the organization needs to focus on to deliver continuous value? That is for me more important, this value mapping, than just having a, uh, running like a hamster on a wheel in creating new forecasts which don't last uh, for even one day after uh, after these are created. So that would be uh, an important point that I think that at least on top of the forecast if the companies can add the value mapping exercise that can be really helpful and then making sure that once these uh, value maps have been developed the work of the people can then again be arranged accordingly to focus on the highest value creating items and least on the value erosion or, or low value creating items. Okay. 
So the three items within this, once the value mapping is made, I said distribute resources to the right areas and starve or redirect the resources from low value pools. Second is focus on the biggest value creation item in the short and the long term. And third is develop key measures that reward individuals for their contribution in value creation. Okay, so that's, those are the three items I would say. And if we do this, it will hugely simplify the work of any organization, especially for the companies which are small or in the incubation stage. You cannot, cannot put resources, too many resources, and because companies cannot afford, and that's why many of the companies go bankrupt, because they are unable to afford or keep, have enough cash flow to keep the business running. And the best way to do it is to understand what is the value creation that you uh, indicators for you and what is your strategy to optimize that and just to focus on those elements and forget about all the other uh, other elements till your business becomes bigger then if you're going after newer value items then you can focus the resources towards those but if you're going to put in a too big a structure uh, whereas uh, you know which requires takes too much of your resources then your business will not be successful or will not be able to grow uh, to its full potential so my suggestion would be that it has to be based on on value creation so two elements of courageous mind one is to develop the courage to fight our own fears limiting paradigms uh, and negative thinking to live the life in the best possible way to use the palette of colors that have been given to us to create our own picture of a life to manifest it and second is uh, these emotions transmit in the form of words, actions, attitude, and that has to be of value creation. So once we have those two elements combined together, we create a courageous mind, a mindset that is, that is creating value for others, creating value for ourselves, and it provides an inner peace inside a mind. So this is the philosophy and the idea that I came up with uh, you know, after Prozeban, and it has been like some time for me to articulate in the in the way that I have now articulated it, uh, and it is it's a journey for me. It's it's also have been a journey. You know, it's like I have been uh, when I moved into it. This required a huge amount of courage to do this to create a company which is moving in this direction. I saw the people struggling, suffering. Whoever I talked to. They're saying that, you know, I'm so stressed, I have so much problems, I don't know if I will have the job, how will I support my family, or, you know, I may not be able to get my vacations if, if things happen in this way. And I have been saying that, you know, if the people develop a courageous mindset, they will be able to overcome those issues because they will first come out of the reactionary mode and they will not be looking at the life from the lens of others, like how people or the society or the expectations that are coming onto them. They feel what is important for themselves and with the laser sharp focus on value creation, looking at their skills, what are their skills which are needed by other people. And they can start from at any level. You don't have to say that I'm only going to contribute when I reach a very senior position. You are contributing on a day-to-day -day basis, on a daily basis, even in your house you're contributing, right? Your words, the environment that you create in the house, the love that you provide, it's all part of value creation. Uh, ask yourself the question, did you do something which made someone else happy or they feel better in a day, you know? And uh, that is the type of question we should ask. At workplace, did you do something which encouraged someone to give hope to another individual? That is all part of courageous mind. Now, another thing which I have seen is like a lot of people change, uh, you know, and become like really courageous and we see their stories after something dramatic happens to them in their life. So I have seen so many people and I've called them for inspirational talks uh, while working for Procter & Gamble. Like there was one guy and he really, really shocked me. Uh, this guy was a mountaineer and uh, he was to come in and speak and I knew that he had an accident in the in the Alps but I did not know that when I uh, he came in and I I was shaking his hand is uh, he didn't had a, a hand it was uh, prosthetics so both his hands were prosthetics and both his legs were prosthetics okay so uh, he had lost it because he was uh, in the Alps and he was uh, stranded due to a storm a huge blizzard 
he was there for three nights. After that, they uh, he got uh, you know hypothermia, and uh, one of his colleagues he uh, was unable to see anything, and then he fell from the mountain while he was rescued, and he was brought back and hospitalized and then uh, his hands were amputated because of the frostbite uh, to his to his hands and his legs now at that time uh, for him he could have said that you know life has been miserable but this individual went through a whole process and he was lucky that he could get the best type of prosthetics uh, you know coming from living in, in in europe but still he had to learn how to button his shirt again he had to do those basic things which we don't even realize or recognize in our lives. That they have to do it all over again to learn those elements. And once he was able to, he, he learned those things, he became uh, not only an inspirational talker as an inspiration for other people. What he did was he started to climb the mountains again. And that part, I think, is having the courageous mind, not giving up by the adversities of life that dishes you those. You rise back and then again do the things that you wanted to do. And he again climbed and he, he showed the pictures of like many mountains that he climbed uh, despite having the prosthetics. This is amazing. My point to the audience right now is that why should we allow the adversities or these unfortunate events to happen uh, which uh, and then only to adapt a courageous mind? Why can't we do it? while we are healthy, while we have a good life and you know so that we can continue to maintain it in that particular way. Why don't we do that? Why do we allow the complacency when everything is going in our favor? Why do we give in to unnecessary uh, you know mind chattering that is happening inside our head and not recognizing all the uh, the the valuable positions you know, when I say valuable position is not a house or a car. The valuable position is the family that you have, the brain that you have, which has, uh, which has made you to earn the money that you have, uh, or your physical well-being, right? So the entire universe, if you think about it, is in perfect symmetry. Every day, you can time it to the clock, the time at which the sun will rise, okay? It doesn't need our help. It will rise at exactly the time it is supposed to rise. All the planets are moving in a particular formation. No planet is bumping into the other. That's nothing is happening like that, right? Uh, maybe one asteroid in millions of years may, you know, move out of the path to hit uh, a planet, but mostly it, it always works into perfect symmetry. Uh, the moon, the sun, the stars are all going in a perfect way, right? You have the lakes, the, you, you, you put a uh, seed in the soil, it, germinates and then it, it comes turns into a plant or later into a tree which which bears fruit and it gives vegetables and, and a lot of stuff so everything is working perfectly but the only imperfect thing that we have is that thought which is appearing in our mind which is keeping us worried right and uh, the problem is that because we become these thoughts which are the negative ones become so compulsive and we spend so much time on those that we are unable to see anything else so I give an example the people who are like when we are uh, giving our exams at that time we don't think of anything we're just thinking about our exams and the only uh, goal for us is to pass that exam right so likewise when people are uh, working on a project the only thing which is keeping them you know in, uh, in their mind is only about delivering the project with excellence right so whatever we have our attention on that's what we are going to focus completely uh, ourselves and we will be oblivious of all the other good things that are happening to us we will not have an objective viewpoint of saying that yeah there is a this is a bit of a problem a challenge that i'm facing but on the other side i have so many good things we will not do it we will only focus on the thing which is bothering us at that particular point let's look at it in this way right now you may have a perfect body you have uh, everything is working well so your mind is going and talking about like you know I should have done something better my life is a little bit of a problem uh, you know I may be losing a job or something and it so happens that you you have some problem uh, medical condition and you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you news that you know what you have to go through an operation 
immediately your mind moves away from the issue of like a potential problem with your boss and you start focusing on your health because that is a bigger issue than the issue at work. So the point is that if that was not such a grave issue in the first place, then why affect our well-being? And that is where the courageous mind comes in. That is the, 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 the point where how do you think that about the bigger picture of your life and seeing this issue as what it actually is, a small issue in the bigger scheme of things. And then once you have a completely clear mind, a completely clear mind, a completely rested, calm mind, you will be able to come up with solutions to solve that issue, right? That is, that is the power of having a, a mindset which is free of encumbrances, a mindset that is free of chatter, a mindset that is providing you a positive emotional energy to be able to manifest the life that you want through your words, actions, and your attitude in life, right? Anything that we need to do, we can, we can learn that, right? And in today's time, it has become even more easier than before to learn new things, to new capabilities. You can go to people, even if you cannot afford, you can go onto the YouTube to get a lot of the data that uh, from the very best people. Uh, books can be, you know, it's now you don't have to even buy, you can download from the internet, you can read those, but it's that intention has to be there. And people need to have the focus, this attention span to learn something. Whatever we provide an attention to starts to get our focus and starts to manifest. Now, I ask you a question that how many times have you just sat without having any thoughts and just giving your attention to your surrounding? Maybe you're just sitting in your, in your garden and just, just paying attention to the trees, to the birds uh, chirping, uh, to maybe if it is raining, so the, to the raindrops, to just the way the grass is growing, to the number of weeds in your, uh, in your, in your garden. Uh, or just walking uh, in the pathway, you know, like on the roads. When you're walking, how much time do you take to really, really uh, put your attention to observing how things are? Uh, the beauty of the places that you, you see. We don't, because our mind is occupied with other thoughts. We are not even enjoying the things that we have. And that's a problem. Our attention has to be on the, the part, which is the part of the now, which is where we are living. But our problem is that we are either in the past or we are into the future of what is going to happen and we always think that if and we associate our happiness with something material or some of an event that happens. So I will be happy when I pass. Now passing or failing is a result of the effort that you put in. Okay, It's not something that uh, you know it's external and then it will provide you with a happiness. It's not like you say, I'm, I'm praying that I pass. Like you study to pass, right? Your performance, your promotion, your promotion is based upon your performance. Uh, it's not based upon, in, I'm talking about like in, in companies which, which recognize meritocracy, uh, right? So uh, it's based upon your performance. So improve your performance and your performance will be good if your mind is rested, if your mind is courageous. If you are creating value for the company and a value for in the process for your own self. So the important thing what I'm trying to bring here, uh, you know, is focus your attention, build an awareness, a peripheral awareness of what is happening around you. Don't live all the time in your mind. Okay. Live outside. And the best way is sometimes because what is mind doing? Mind is a, is a tape recorder. It's whatever, you are observing whatever you are seeing is being recorded and when you assign an emotion to that particular uh, recording that becomes it's good it, then you assign a feeling of good or bad to it like for example when you're walking uh, it can happen for some people that rain starts and they say wow the weather has become great because it's raining another person who may have to go to some place and was waiting for a bus at the bus stop uh, he or she may say that, oh my God, what a terrible weather. Uh, I, it's going to create some puddles and it's going to uh, spoil my new shoes. So same environment, 
different reactions of different people based upon their interpretation uh, of the situation. It's, there's nothing wrong. A rain is rain, right? But this is how when we are living into our mind and we, we allow those things to happen, that's what causes uh, huge, huge issues to our life. So uh, once again, Courageous Mind, this was the idea. So what I have done then with Courageous Mind. So to help the people with this, I have come up with three concrete areas in which I focus. So I help teams and individuals to develop a courageous, non-reactionary mind. Now it sounds beautiful, but what does it mean? And how do I, I do that? So one is developing self-awareness and taking and making the people to take full responsibility of life. Another problem is that no one takes the responsibility of their life. They say that, uh, you know, I am like this because of an external factor, because someone did this, this, my boss was not fair, my parents were not good, uh, I had, uh, I was not given the opportunity, I was born in a poor country, I didn't have the chance to study in the best school possible, uh, I was not born a European or a US person. All these are excuses, right? And we have to take full responsibility for our life. Whatever has been given, we should have gratitude for that. And from there, we should be able to build a life. And I have personally known so many people who uh, had a really, really tough childhood and, and life, and they were able to amazingly create a beautiful life for themselves. So each one of us can do it. And there are people who have everything, and then they just spoil it as well. Second within that is emotional reinvention through awareness, positive rituals, and rewiring of the mind. So how do you maintain, because if emotion and feelings are the way of manifesting your life, then how do we reinvent ourselves and our, rewire our mind to create these positive emotions all the time, despite things may not be going in the way that we want them to go. And that's what is based upon the rituals that I, uh, I help the people with. And also help the people in breaking their limiting paradigms to stretch out of the box of limitation. So all this comes under having a non-reactionary, courageous mind. The second is, which is more getting into the value creation part, is more on the assessments, which is identifying the value pools and drivers. So one is the identification of value streams and pools, including resource allocation. Uh, in many companies, I've seen that people always think that the my best people are put into the top position. That should not be the, the case. Uh, you know, people can because over time they can reach it, but the most valuable person should be in the greatest value creation job. The most valuable person should be in the most value creation job for the organization to ensure that they get, they maximize the value. And this is the new concept also coming from the, from the HR of uh, you know the leading edge companies, they are also doing this thing because it's important to put in the right people at the right places and the best performers have to be in the place of highest value creation. Second is evaluation of performance versus the strategy. Now, you may have a strategy and if this strategy is not delivering the value that the business was expecting to create, then there are two issues that can happen in the business. One is that the strategy was not correct or the strategy is no longer uh, as potent or powerful as it was before and it requires uh, a change. Or the execution of the strategy is not taking place in the best possible way and the execution has to improve. So what I do is I try to understand what is the strategy and evaluation of the performance of the business versus the strategy to identify the value blockages. Uh, either the value blockages or it is that the strategy in itself is, uh, is redundant and require a changing. And then within the assessment is the assessment of value mapping. Where has been the value for the business in the last three to five years? Where is the value moving in the future? Is it being taken away by some of the competition, uh, the business, uh, the, the uh, market dynamics, the geographical conditions, the uh, spending power of the consumers? So that provide, the map provides like how the value is moving what is the strategy and then the strategy with the right value and then the resources putting into the right direction that is what helps in terms of getting the business so this is the part of assessment the third is unlocking value so we have done first the people's mind second is we did assessment to understand what is happening with the business and this can also be for the personal life as well and the third is unlocking value what does unlocking value means 
is simplification to drive productivity and free up value. That would be one. Key performance measures in line with value drivers. So uh, the key performance measure, which is like the, uh, the valuation of the people and the company should be based upon things which are linked directly to the performance of the business of value creation and creating then the building blocks of value creation and challenge and channeling the resources to them. Okay. And finally, uh, using the strategic and tactical marketing mix interventions. Okay, so how do we use the marketing mix in the best possible way to optimize the value creation for the company? So these are the three areas under which I help the people and organizations uh, through the Forum of Courageous Mind. But what I think is that each one of you, each one of us have the power to to get on to the journey of becoming courageous minds ourselves. When we are living a life of courage and the courage in the way that I defined it, along with a value creation mindset, we are the courageous mind. We are the courageous people. We are the people who are moving in the direction, creating value, creating, enriching our life and the life of other people. And that was the whole idea and the, and, and the concept that I have on Courageous Mind. And uh, I hope it uh, picks up fast. I was talking with one of the person who had worked with me for quite a long time. Uh, he told me uh, while he was wishing me the birthday that, Waki, this is not just a company, it's a philosophy. And there are a lot of people who follow this philosophy and it's, it's, it's catching because people need it. And uh, it's not as much about about like, you know, you have to do as a sale type of a thing. So, you, you know, to earn money, but it's more about like, you have to offer something to the people which is valuable for them. And, and what I'm trying to do through this medium and with all these talks that I do or the articles I put onto the LinkedIn, I never say that contact me and I will do this or why I'm not advertising. I try to contribute back to what the society has given me to some very wonderful people who have enriched my life, you know, who have been uh, the key pillars of making the person me, the brand Waki, right? And I want to thank them all and this is my way of doing it. And if all of you also do the same thing, your learnings, your ideas, your creativity, what you have experienced, if you pass it on to the people, other people who may benefit from them to develop their own courageous mind, to live the life in the best possible way that you are able to enrich it, that's the that's the entire purpose of it, right? So we can all benefit from it. Uh, so that was the idea. Uh, I would uh, be happy if uh, you have any comment, any thought, uh, any suggestion. Uh, that would be great. Any thoughts? Mm -hmm. The people who are just waving here. Uh, anyone on Facebook? Anyone on Instagram? I think it would be good if, if people share their experiences. And I, I asked you a question. How many of you who are on, uh, on, the, on the net right now are, by my definition, truly courageous minds? Anyone? Come on, I'm sure there will be many courageous minds on the on the net right now. Is this a sign of humility that you don't want to <laughs> talk about being uh, courageous or is it like you feel that there is uh, work needed to get to that particular level in your, in, in your mind? Uh, but anyway, we are all on a journey. No one is, uh, is perfect, but uh, uh, before leaving, I would just say if you have any uh, thoughts, any questions, or if you need to have a chat with me, let me know and uh, drop me your, your questions uh, on my email or uh, through my uh, Facebook and I will be more than happy to engage in a discussion because having a discussion always makes you think better and evolve your thinking and make you, uh, uh, make you even, a, even better as m many experiences are, are shared. So with that, I want to end this session and I want to uh, thank you all for uh, your time, uh, appreciate it, and look forward to speaking with you uh, next week again. Bye-bye.